Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribers button and give this video a thumbs up. Sonny asks Nina in her office whether they can put the past behind them, just as she did with Drew. Nothing is to be buried, according to Nina. She told lies that destroyed their relationship. Furthermore, their connection was predicated on a fictitious man named Mike. Sonny believes that Mike was somewhat genuine. They each want the other to be happy, and she doesn't want to forget what they had. Nina promises to only share anecdotes about what a wonderful parent he is if Ava and Scott are foolish enough to ask her to testify against him. She wishes for custody for him. For the sake of Avery, Sonny swears he must. Nina acknowledges that regarding Ava, she ought to have paid more attention to him. Sonny claims that he ought to have heeded his own counsel and kept Ava out. He ignored her flaws, though, not only because she is Avery's mother but also because he was devastated by Nina's passing. Nina claims that although she was also screwed up, she is now much better. That pleases him to hear. She inquires as to his current state of mind. Sonny declares that he is prepared for anything and that he will never longer be used by others. They send each other their best wishes. When Maxi returns later to discuss deception matters, he discovers Nina is deep in contemplation. When Sonny arrived, according to Nina, he was just like his former self and desired to bury the hatchet. If she wants Sonny back, Maxi queries. Although Nina claims she will always love Sonny, she is stronger and prepared to move on from her intense and hopeless love. Maxi remembers that not too long ago, she was determined to win Sonny's return. Nina declares that this is the only time she will say it. Ava was correct, her life and Sonny stone to never have. Even Nina acknowledges that Carly was correct and that they were all okay. She lost sight of who she was in her attempts to become the ideal lady for Sonny and to change him into someone he wasn't. Maxie expresses her pride in Nina. She experienced heartbreak, but she also learned a few lessons from it. In light of Drew's circumstances, Nina isn't so sure she did. After so many highs and lows, according to Nina, they have been able to support one another. She acknowledges that she thinks Drew would be a fine congressman and that it's because of Drew that Willow has reached out to her as a mother. Willow wants Drew to win the election on her behalf if she has faith in him. Joss notices Gio is zomped out by the pool and informs him that towels are being waited for. Later, when he thanks her for saving him from danger, she responds that she is not his boss and inquires as to whether everything is all right. Gio feels like he's been here too long. Joss is perplexed when he tells her about Lois' request that he go back home because Lois brought him here. Gio describes the gig that his aunt Lois set up for him. Joss notes that Lois managed musicians and he believes that Lois saw this as simply a wonderful opportunity. Gio surmises that she must be correct because she would want him to go. But because Aunt Lois went to such lengths to locate the job, perhaps he ought to return and accept it. Joss asserts that he must make his own decisions and that it is their responsibility to determine what brings them happiness in life. Carly says she hears they have her to thank for bringing Gio to Port Charles as she brings Lois the drink she requested. According to Lois, the sky is the limit and his future is bright. She keeps saying that Gio is capable of playing every instrument. Carly brings up Gio's schooling being funded by Sonny. Gio's mother, Camilla, was an Italian cousin who immigrated to the United States to play for the Brooklyn Philharmonic, as Lois recalls. After just six months, she developed feelings for Francis Palmieri, Gio's father. She claims that their romance was intense and that they eloped just before he was sent overseas. Then she discovered she was expecting, but Francis was killed in action before she could inform him. That is such a depressing story, Cardi comments. According to Lois, they all came together in support of Camilla, and just when they believed that she and Gio would have their own happily ever after, Camilla passed away. Gio was only ten years old and had just begun his musical education. At that point, Sonny took over to cover his schooling costs. Why has Sonny never brought up Gio to Carly? She wonders. 
When Sonny gets home, Natalia is there to greet him. Why is she here, he wonders. She is aware that he is still not overly fond of her, but she is here for Alison, or rather, Blaze. Blaze put a lot of effort into her profession and that contract, which are now in jeopardy, and she sobs. Blaze's admirers, according to Sonny, didn't merely hear what she said. Blaze and her admirers were harmed by what she stated. Natalia is aware of this, and Christina has previously discussed her remarks with her. Though it was a bit too late, she acknowledges that she can now truly see how much Alison and Christina love one another. Does she want him to act as a go-between? Sonny asks. Natalia claims she can't at least attempt to salvage her profession, but it is her mess to clean up with her daughter. Sonny understands this has to do with his previous connections in the music industry. Natalia believes that if he aids Blaze, it will also benefit Christina. She thinks they could release an independent record with completely fresh content if he invested in Blaze. She will also put up her money, but it won't be sufficient on her own. You want me to bankroll a new record label? Sonny queries. He has no knowledge of the industry. According to Natalia, if she does, his investment will provide a hundredfold return. He inquires as to Blaze's thoughts on this. Natalia acknowledges she doesn't know, but she is confident Blaze will succeed and become a star. Sonny declares his participation, but he wants no one to be aware of his involvement. Brooke Lynn is the one in control and will receive the credit. Natalia looks shocked. He states that you can accept or reject his offer. He invites Anna to escape with him at Valentin's. He believes she has already risked her life to save him, but she can't take that chance. She says that if it weren't for Charlotte, she would have given him to Kate's. Valentin begs her to accompany him so they may begin a new life together, even though he knows it's a lie since she loves him. She is not going to live in hiding. She can't give up her time with Noah and Emma for any reason, having already left Robin once. Valentin tells her that he will be gone when the FBI shows there, and they will make the connection back to her. Dots don't prove anything, she claims. Don't throw your life away. Come with me, he sobs. She gives him a kiss and sobs. I'm sorry, I can't go with you, even if I love you. Anna asks if he has backup plans, such as cash and new identification, since she knows he doesn't have much time. Though the oak, he says, Anna doesn't understand why he risked everything here, in a nice life for pikemen. What took place? Valentin says, you did, to her. Valentin reveals that the reason he's been with pikemen all along is because of the mission she and Brennan carried out with the defector. Getting the defector's money to establish up pikemen was the main goal. Even after leaving the WSB, he continued to work under contract with Pikeman. Years later, she broke up with Brennan, and he had no more motivation to be a decent boy. She wished he had confided in her and shown her trust. Although Valentin acknowledges that he almost notified her ahead of time that he intended to take over, he chose not to place her in a situation where she would have to arrest him. And here we are once more, observes Anna. He makes the point that she is letting him go, not detaining him. Anna mentions that Kate's discovered some fake emails between her and Brennan. Admitting that it was him, he was cautious, nothing would stand up in court, and he would never bring her up in the wrong. But Anna points out that he did utilize her. Anything positive about Valentin, he sobs, is due to her. She refutes that claim, saying he is a decent man. She says take Charlotte here as soon as possible and go since she's been here too long. Even if Valentin knows she can't accompany him, she should at least pretend to be interested in going. Anna sobs, saying she would go with him right away, if she could. If it is true, he queries. She says, you'll never know, with a smile. Charlotte appears out of nowhere, notices Anna sobbing, and inquires, what's wrong? Kate's repeatedly knocks on Jason's door, until he answers. What took him so long? Kate's wonders. Jason suggests they should go to the warehouse if he wants to talk, since this is where he lies. Kate's tells him that if he doesn't follow his instructions, Carly will suffer the consequences. He holds the cards here. 
So, what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.